If I had to describe Monica in one word, it would be fortitude. For an 18-year-old international student to survive such a tragic event and then return the following semester and earn a 4.0, that truly demonstrates a very high level of intellectual and emotional maturity. She is a fearless young woman, and I am incredibly honored to know her. Norway. A beautiful place, a peaceful place, a safe place, the place Monica Cora has called home. From the foothills to the fjords, she was always a runner. But the trail led her to a different identity. Monica became a survivor. Monica arrived in Dallas as an 18-year-old freshman, still learning English, still adjusting to a new country. The first few months were hard, until another runner from back home, Christina Ikram Ingeset, arrived on campus the next semester. She came and we really connected well, and then I had someone to really talk to again and just sharing experience and also be able to communicate and actually talk Norwegian for once. Toward the end of their first semester together, Monica and Christina went to a party a few blocks from campus. On their way home afterward, a van pulled up alongside them. And then suddenly I had someone behind me. I had a gun next to my head. At first, I tried dragging her towards me, screaming. We kept fighting, but then when he pulled the gun towards me, then I just freeze. Then they dragged me into the van. I just thought to myself, just give them whatever so they don't kill you. I begged, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Take whatever you want from me. I want to live. I want to survive. I felt like it was hours, days. Every second was so long. You feel so helpless, so weak. Like you're waiting to die, but you just try to hold on. I saw other shoes, woman shoes in the car. And I was thinking about it at that point. Gosh, they have they've done this before. I tried to look into their eyes and it was nothing. You couldn't see a person in them. It was nothing. They pushed me and they told me to run. So I did. I was so, so desperate. And I told myself that Monica just focus. This, this is real. And at that point, I just started to cry. Exhausted and in shock, with duct tape still caught in her hair, police took Monica to Parkland Memorial Hospital for treatment at 4 a.m. Christina found out where she was a few hours later and rushed to see her. Monica was laying in the bed and we were just crying and hugging, crying, crying and hugging. And... You see someone you love again that you thought you would never see again? I think that's one of the best moments in my life. Later that day, Monica's coach visited with her. I held her and uh, she just reached out and said, I'm gonna need help. It was just too many feelings I was scared, I was shocked, I was terrified. I was afraid that people would look at me as dirty for the rest of my life. I realized that it's, it's not my fault. And I told myself that, just promise yourself to ne never blame yourself. She's crying and I, what is this, Monica? Papa, I've been, I've been uh, raped. Oh, no, I said. It was like a nightmare. I just want to wake up and say, no, it isn't so. And 
I wanted to go to Dallas at once. But Monica said, no, you don't have to come here. I will survive this, she said. I will go on, and I will be the same Monica as I was before. I will fight until I win my life back. For Monica, regaining her identity began with returning to the place she felt most free. She began to run. I think I ran for 10 minutes, but I felt so good. It really cleared my mind. I got a lot of emotions out. And every day I felt stronger and stronger and stronger. I felt like myself again. Monica helped identify the three men who attacked her. Luis Zuniga, Alfonso Zuniga, and Arturo Aravalo were brought to trial beginning in December 2010, almost a year after the assault. She testified against them, confronting each man in court. Two of the defendants were sentenced to life in prison, and the third defendant pled guilty and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Normally, we do not name or show sexual assault victims, but Monica Cora wants to empower other rape victims. I want to show people that it's, it's not the victim's fault. I want to be a person that people can look at and say that it's possible to move on. I took the control back, the one that I lost that night. I'm glad I did. This fall, Monica was running again. She helped SMU win the Conference USA title in cross country in October. This May, she will graduate from SMU. The trail goes on and she follows it. A woman, a runner, a survivor.